welcome. You are listening to another episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast series brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing. We also want to thank our silver sponsors, Lendia Law, Eilis Works, and Pronox. If you would like to network and share your experience with our podcast guests and other aesthetic industry professionals, join our Facebook or LinkedIn communities by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Today, we're going to be speaking with one of the finest experts in aesthetics. Our host, Jeffrey Richmond, is an award-winning 20-year veteran of the aesthetic industry whose passion led him to co-found the Business of Aesthetics community. Over to you, Jeff. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Business of Aesthetics podcast. I am thrilled again to invite Narin Aruraja to join us today. Narin uh, has spent the first part of this year working with hundreds of clients the way he, he starts every year and wanted to point out some of the mistakes that he sees across the board that practices are making. So we've invited him to join us to talk about what are the four biggest mistakes practice owners are making in 2023. And uh, Naren, thanks for joining us again. Thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah, it's it's a great uh, conversation to be had because I feel like, you know, the 80-20 rule, right? You can do, you know, 80% of the stuff correct, but if you don't get that key 20% right, it doesn't matter that you're doing the bottom 80% right. So it's better to just know what the important things are and get those things right. So today's conversation, four biggest marketing mistakes aesthetic practice owners make. It comes from my experience over the last 15 plus years working with practice owners. Um, some are things I learned in the last few years, others are things I have noticed, you know, perhaps even a decade ago, but still they seem to be the the top mistakes that practice owners continue to make even today and because of it suffer from it. So Naren, what uh, why don't you give us a quick overview of those four mistakes that you are, keep seeing and and then we'll we'll jump into them one by one and kind of handle them and see what alternatives we have versus making the same mistakes that you're seeing out in the market. Absolutely. The first mistake I see practice owners make is that they don't understand that search engine optimization, Google SEO, which is, by the way, the lowest cost way to get a new patient, is a winner-take-all game. It's like getting into med school, the top med school in the country. Two, three percent get in, and then nobody, everybody else doesn't. So it's one of those things, you know, where you have to be in that top five percent in this particular case to be in, be getting ninety five percent of the free traffic. So we'll jump into like what you need to know to be one of the winners. So we'll go through that. Uh, the next mistake I see practice owners making is they don't realize that the way people buy today is completely different from the way they used to buy. I mean, some realize it, but they're not acting as if they realize it. So again, a lot of practice owners still, I think, are not focusing on key things they need to focus on by understanding how people buy in 2023. So they are behaving or they are doing the things that they used to do. Like, for example, asking patients, how did you find out about us? That was a wonderful question 30 years ago. But it's not relevant today. So they're making a lot of mistakes because they don't adjust to the changing world and changing environment we live in. So let's talk about the aesthetic bias journey. So once you understand that, now you can play into it. Now you can you know, do the things that's going to help you stand out with regards to how people buy today. The third mistake I see people making is, um, you know, they still miss a lot of uh, new patient calls, uh, meaning they're getting the calls either because they don't answer the calls or they're not good at booking appointments. Two thirds of new patient calls are getting wasted. I mean, if you think about it, that's like hundreds of thousands of dollars in in in, in uh, benefit that you would have otherwise received. That's just going down the drain because you haven't mastered the phone. So we'll get into that. And the last one I still see people make is, um, you know, Google makes a lot of money. I mean, of course, if you own Google stocks, you would have done really well over the last 10, 20 years. But if you are not a Google stockholder, but you are like most practice owners, you could also end up wasting tens of thousands of dollars every year or hundreds of thousands of dollars over time on, on Google ads. I'm not saying every dollar spent on Google ads is a waste, but 
but you can easily waste a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't do the right things. So those are the four biggest mistakes that I think is hurting practice owners in 2023. If they just fix these four mistakes, that will change their game, change their practice. Well, let's jump into it. Yeah, uh, the your, on your last point, it seems like the only annuity you get out of Google is if you invested in their stock. You certainly don't get it with Google AdWords, but uh, if you want an annuity with Google, I think you need to invest in the stock. And then you've done quite well, right? Yeah. I mean, that's I think- the money. That, don't spend the money on the AdWords. Just put the money in <laughs> the stock. Exactly. Uh, I was just, um, you know, Google used to be worth $32 billion not too long ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago. Today, it's worth $1.5 trillion. So you gave Google, let's say, $10,000. You invested $10,000 when the stock, I mean, the Google was worth $32 billion. Today, that will be worth, um, you know, um, half a million dollars. I mean, literally, like for doing nothing, your stock would have gone up so much. You know, Naren, out of all the advice from all the years you've given me, we, I don't, <laughs> we knew each other then. Uh, so, I, uh, I should have given myself that advice too. I guess I didn't. <laughs> right. The crystal ball makes it easier. Yeah. So back to SEO. I want to talk about SEO. Uh, you, you said it's an all or, you know, it's, 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 it's an all or nothing in a lot of ways. Uh, and SEO, because what you're saying is you have to have really good SEO to be seen. You have to be in this top 5%. Even if you're spending money on SEO and you're not in this top 5%, you, you are wasting your money because you're doing SEO. You're, you're improving, I guess, your search engine optimization, but they're only selecting from the top 5%. If you're in the six percent seven percent eighth percent you're not being seen you're not being seen at all so how first of all how do i know whether i'm in the top five percent or not how do i know whether my pages are being seen exactly that's a great question jeff i think the simple answer is if you are ranking for at least 100 keywords and phrases on page one of google meaning you are among the top 10 results for those 100 keywords and phrases there's a good chance you are in the top five percent but most practices are not ranking for 100 keywords. Maybe they're ranking for five, maybe 10. But most practices, 95% of the practices are not in the top 5%. So it's kind of uh, interesting. If you really sit back and try to look at it, you know, why this is the way it is, it's because Google makes a killing from ads. I mean, literally, they made $224 billion from ads last year. So for Google to make that amount of money, they need more and more customers. How do they create more and more customers? They make free traffic impossible for 95% of practice owners, business owners, you name it. So now 95% has no choice but to Google give Google lots of money in the form of ads. So they do it because it makes business sense. So, I mean, if I were in their shoes, I would do the same thing. For my stock to go up 50 times, that's like a perfect strategy, right? Because you make the free stuff so hard that everyone has to pay you a lot of money to get the paid stuff. So pay, pay traffic. So, so that's, that's the game they play. And, um, th- but on the other hand, I cannot call Google a bad actor. I mean, they're very blunt about their business model. They tell you how they do this. Uh, and they tell you what you need to do to get into the top 5%. But getting in the top 5% is like, I mean, I have, you know, kids, uh, one went, went into, went, you know, got into university and the other one is, you know, about to start that process of applying and everything else. It's a stressful two years. You know, you are doing AP classes, you're doing extracurriculars, you are budding up your teachers to get references, you're trying to get good scores in exams like SAT. It's pain because you have to ace every one of those things to get into that top 5%, to get into those top schools. Same thing here. Now, the difference here is um, it's never ending, meaning like Google doesn't give you admission once and then for the rest of your life, you are set. That's not how Google works. It's like every day you have to earn it. Every day you have to do it. So what I find is you're right. There are a lot of companies that quote unquote do SEO, but they don't put the hours or the, I mean, the effort on a consistent basis day in and day out. So they use technology like software and so forth, but nobody is, you know, writing articles with original content. Nobody is checking your web pages to see what are all the issues with your website today or web page today 
based on the latest Google Eat update or Google Lighthouse update. So, right. so Google is like very transparent. It's like imagine Stanford telling you this is what you need to do to get in. Of course, Stanford doesn't. They make it very vague. But Google kind of will tell you what you need to do to get into the top 5%. But then you have to work a lot. So one of the things that we ended up doing, Jeff, you know this because you have been a client from 2008. Over the last 15 plus or 17 plus years, we kind of just built a team that knows what to do to get into Stanford or get into the Google top 5% in our in our world every week, every month. So it can be done. There are six things you need to pay attention to. One is NAP. That's name, address, phone number, consistency. Second one is Google Eat. That's specific to you know healthcare. Third one is original content. Fourth one is quality backlinks. Fifth one is um, um, Google Lighthouse score, which is a score Google gives every single page on your website. Do you have high scores or not? And last but not least, Google reviews. So the first five of the six, our teams can take care of. The last one, we need we need help uh, to do this. Um, you mentioned uh, Google Lighthouse scores. So that's another way I would know whether my pages are ranking or not, right? Based on the the Lighthouse scores. If I'm not getting A pluses on the Lighthouse scores, then my pages aren't ranking, right? But yes. Or just because I'm getting good Lighthouse scores also doesn't necessarily mean that my pages are ranking. That is correct. So it's kind of like, imagine you get perfect SATs, but your GPA is 3.5 or, you know, your essays suck, you know, you're not going to get in, right? Same thing. You need like a perfect A in every one of these areas to have a chance of being in the top 5%. Now, the good news is if you do get a perfect A in all these six areas, you're going to be in the top 5% and you will get a lot of free traffic. I mean, 95% of the free traffic from Google. So Google is very fair um, as opposed to like universities. Sometimes it's a voodoo science. You have no idea what's going on, but here it's very black and white algorithm driven. It's software driven. So it's very black and white, but the thing is it's a lot of work every, every day and every week. And you mentioned, uh, you know, being in the first page uh, of the, the search, I always thought it was like the top three or four uh, that maybe the top 10 d don't matter. And then also I'm thinking if you're at seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, someone's always nipping at your heels to get those spots. That's an excellent question, Jeff. Um, I know people used to just focus on like the three keywords, like, you know, if you're a dermatologist, am I ranking for dermatologist city name, right? But Google has become so part of our lives. Today, we use Google 8.5 billion times a day, and they're what's called long tail. So even Google doesn't hasn't seen these searches yesterday, meaning like a significant portion of the searches are brand new, even to Google that gets so many people typing these searches. So many of these searches are in the long tail. So when I talk about, you know, um, like it's not about one or two keywords, it's hundreds. I mean, like you, your practice is ranking for 800 keywords. And you're correct, out of those 800 keywords, maybe 300 are in the top three. So the idea is that, think of it like fishing with a net. You want your net to be so effective, you're able to catch thousands of fish. Of course, some are huge fish and, you know, and it's easy to catch and some are difficult and not as lucrative. But the idea is you keep growing the amount of fish you catch every single time you go out because you get better at it and better at it. So uh, because when people see you again and again, in your case, you know, people see you a hundred thousand times every single month for all kinds of keywords. So when they see you so many times for so many things, they kind of believe there is you and then there is everybody else. When they start like really remembering your name because you're always there, always showing up for anything and everything they can think of that they need, you have an unfair advantage. And that's how the return on investment totally shifts. So let's say you're getting the same patient from ads. It might cost you you know, 10 cents on the dollar to get the same patient from Google SEO because they keep seeing you so many times and you're not paying per click. So your cost is zero, even though you're seen thousands of times. Uh, so it really, really gives you that advantage. So you bring up a good point and it moves us to our next point is understanding the aesthetic buyer's journey. We used to say that if we touched a patient six, seven times, they would get to know who we are. And I love your question that, you know, we all used to ask, where did you hear about us? In today's world, 
they shouldn't really know where they heard about. I mean, unless it was a direct referral from a, a you know, a relative, a, a close relative that really has a lot of trust. It's they need to hear about us all from all over the place, right? To to get any kind of credibility or to get any kind of trust from them that we're a reputable place but maybe you can walk through that aesthetic buyer's journey for us and I like that uh, I've heard you one time talk about you know standing in the middle of uh, uh, what is it in New York on 42nd Street Times Square you know and just the amount of information coming at us in one second if you just turn around and look at 360 degrees it's almost overwhelming Exactly. We, we live in this digital age where our iPhones, our devices are in front of us or with us literally six, seven, eight hours a day. I mean, we are literally looking at it and there are hundreds and thousands of information. Some are organic, some are paid that's coming at us. So how do you stand out? How do you differentiate? And um, I think understanding how buyers go about making buying decisions is key because if you don't understand it, then you're not working smart, you're working hard, you might, you know, let's say, spend $10,000 sending out mailers, for example. But is that campaign effective once you understand the aesthetic bias journey? I think the big shift that Google brought along, you know, in 1998, when it was first introduced is it shifted the power from the business owners like Procter & Gamble, who could spend hundreds of millions of dollars brainwashing you that you need tight. If not, your clothes are not going to look good uh, to the consumers where the consumers can ask specific questions. I remember even 25 years ago or 1998, we didn't have, you know, seven different flavors of Japanese restaurants. Like now there is sushi and different kinds of sushi and there is soup and different kinds of Japanese soup. Why is that? Because you can go to Google and ask a question saying, I'm looking for this type of Japanese soup. I'm looking for a restaurant that carries Japanese and Korean food. Like you can be extremely specific and Google will tell you, yeah, here is, here is a list of seven restaurants that meet your specific criteria. So it created like a lot of, you know, specialists, a lot of micro entrepreneurs. And also it shifted the power. Now the restaurant owner doesn't need to be part of this massive conglomerate with, you know, $10 million marketing budget. As long as he does a good job, he gets great reviews. He's found on search he can stand out and compete, even though he's not part of this massive corporation. So in some sense, it's a blessing for a lot of the little guys, like a lot of practice owners listening to this, not, not you know, like, you know, private equity buying up thousand practices or whatever, but rather the individual, because you do a good job, you master SEO, you dominate your market, you can stand out, you can get business. So I think the way the aesthetic bias journey works in 2023 is, 8.5 billion times a day, we go to Google, we type in what we need. Why? Because we work hard for our money. We want to make sure we are using our money wisely, we meaning the consumers. So we go to Google, we look for stuff. When we look for stuff, Google will both educate us. So we are trying to learn about something, but also will help us who can help, will tell us who can help us solve that problem. It'll show listings of, you know, practices and so forth. So step one is you have to show up, right? When I'm doing research about, oh, you know, I have a wedding coming up and I want to look my best. And I think Botox might be one of the solutions and I'm starting to research Botox. If your website starts showing up, you know, multiple times for whatever I'm looking for, you're going to start, you're going to be somebody that I start remembering. Your practice, your brand name is something that I start remembering. So that's step one. And then eventually I'm going to click on one of those links, especially a link, you know, on page one or near the top of page one. And then when I click on it, my question is, are you an expert? You know, I ask three questions. Are you an expert? Do I like you? Do I trust you? Expert is important because, you know, we, we want the best in 2023. Like you want to redo your kitchen. You're not going to go with a general contractor and put up with all the nonsense. You're going to find a kitchen remodeling specialist, look at the before and afters, you know, make sure that his or her aesthetics, you know, is what you're looking for and you like what they're capable of doing. And then you call them, you, you interview, you talk to some references, maybe check out some Google reviews. And finally, you write that $100,000 check. 
that's something we couldn't do 25 years ago. 25 years ago, you had to go to the yellow pages. You have to flip through contractors and call every single one. And you have no idea who specializes in kitchen because remember, yellow pages didn't have a kitchen contractor section. They just had a contractor section. They had a dermatology section. They didn't have a section on people who are really good at Botox or really good at X, Y, Z. So, and, it, uh, and it was listed alphabetically, not exactly not based on reviews not based on reviews and you don't even know if if, if he's like started yet two minutes ago or has been practicing for 20 years with unbelievable awesome customer reviews so information was not available to us consumers now it's in our fingertips so the key is you know show up on google when people are looking for you and then second get really good at convincing them in 90 seconds or less to pick up the phone and call your office in other words you want them to believe there is you and then there is everybody else. You know, you are the expert. Why? Because there are so many before and afters and write-ups on what you've done for others like me, you know, because I'm looking for the same thing that you've done for these others. There are videos positioning you as an authority. So I'm like, oh, this is not just a doctor, but this is someone that everybody listens to. That makes me trust you even more. Uh, even Google reviews, right? When I start reading those reviews on that particular thing I'm looking for on that page, I'm much more likely to feel safe. Safety is a big concern we all have. Like we don't want to waste our money. We don't want to ruin our health. So we want to make sure that whoever you're going to go to is, is capable of you know, meeting our needs. And we know that Google algorithms are so challenging. And we know that managing those algorithms, I mean, we, the consumers know. So there's almost this like inherent trust that comes from showing up on Google itself because we trust that Google is vetted and not like somebody sitting at Google, but the AI and the computers and the algorithms and all this stuff have vetted uh, those that are not good. So they're at least in the organic. We, we assume that we're being sh shown things that have good reviews, uh, that have quality, that have a reputation in the market, that are writing, that are and that are relevant to the specific thing that we're, we're looking for. You mentioned 90 seconds, Naren. That's a phenomenon that's only gifted to an organic search though, right? Because they're on a paid search. They're not staying on the website nearly as long because there's not as much trust. Is that, is that right? 100%. The average person who comes through SEO, meaning you're ranking at the top of Google and they clicked on your link, that person will spend an average of 90 seconds on your website on that particular page. But if they clicked on an ad, they are spending an average of 15 seconds. If it's a Google ad, and if it's a social media ad, they're only spending five seconds. And the reason they're only spending 15 seconds as opposed to 90 seconds is because there's no trust. Like it's an ad, we know it's an ad. Anybody could buy it. Anybody who's willing to pay $5 a click can you know, be on that spot. So right. because of that, knowledge we have about the ad, we don't trust it. So we're looking for reasons to leave. And on average, we are leaving in 15 seconds, as opposed to with SEO, we are not looking for reasons to leave. We trust it because Google is the one organically showing that result. Right. And I think in the one case, uh, you're, you're clicking on, if you click paid ads, which I don't, I mean, I'm one of those people that don't click paid ads. Uh, but if you do click on a paid ad, you better see what you want to see immediately. If yes. you don't, you're not going to necessarily search the website. If you have come to this place with some trust, you're willing to spend a little bit more time in the website and find out, you know, the answer that that you're looking for. I want to I want to switch gears, though, because and this one's a little too close to home sometimes for us, because we, you know, even uh, now 2007. So it's 16, 17 years in practice. We still struggle with picking up the phone every time that we we need to pick up the phone or how we handle those phone calls. Are we saying the right things? But you mentioned one of the mistakes uh, in 2023 that you see often is, you know, up to two thirds of new patient calls uh, are not converting into booking appointments. That is correct. And it's unfortunate, it's the average aesthetic practice in 2023 is booking one out of every three new patient calls into appointments. How, means, Narin, I want to interrupt before you start with this and just say yeah. how most, I know 
I know what we miss because we work with you and phone calls are recorded and we can go back and we can measure it. But most of these practices, do they even know that they, they probably perceive that? No, we always pick up the phone. No, we convert a lot. What do you think versus like um, uh, perception versus reality based in what you've seen? Yeah, you are hundred percent right. Uh, most, if I, if I, if you, if I, if you call a hundred doctors in private practice, uh, you know, and then you ask them, you know, how are you doing the way you answer your phone? They're going to all say, oh, we do an excellent job. We are killing it. We are, we are amazing. How do you know? Because my team told me so. You know, um, like it's like asking your ten-year-old, how did he do in math? I'm doing great. How do you know? Because because I know, you know, as opposed to he gets a grading sheet at the end of the day and you look at the grades and then you're like, oh, okay, you're only getting 70. And here is the reason you got 70. You missed these three questions or you got them wrong. It's not like these people are lying to you or they are, you know, just that we all are biased, right? I mean, it's human nature, right? I mean, if I ask you, Jeff, um, you know, are you smart or stupid? Are you going to tell me I'm stupid? You know, you know what I mean? If you have mm -hmm. any self-worth, you're going to say I'm smart, right? I mean, that's human nature. That's who we are. So, it's not like these are bad people doing bad things. It's the bias we have. So, so the number one reason, Jeff, why these practices are only converting one third is that they don't know what their conversion rate is. Imagine sending your kid to a school where they, he or she never gets grades. He or she's never given any, any, any exams back. Like he has no idea how he or she's doing. This kid doesn't matter how hard he tries, how smart he, he is, he's gonna be really suffering two, three, four years down the road because he has no idea what's going on and he has no idea where he needs to work on or what, what, what he's doing. So I think that's the number one issue. Like, I mean, you wouldn't send your kid to a school where there's no grades, no exams, no way to evaluate him. Same thing here, but we are doing that with our practices. We don't check our conversion rate. We don't check what percentage of the calls are getting missed. So if there's one thing I'm going to leave you with is start measuring it, like how you do it, that can be a little complicated. Like number one, you have to record the calls. Number two, somebody has to go through them and then figure out what percentage of the calls are getting booked, what percentage of the calls are getting missed. But it's so essential. I mean, imagine getting a hundred thousand new patients and only 300 are booking or 333 are booking and the other 666. And let's say each patient is worth 10,000 over a few years. How much money are you losing every single year? Because you, are, you haven't mastered this. Mm -hmm. And the cost of training your staff to convert that 67% that's not coming is a lot less expensive, less time, uh, uh, less time, less money, less everything than trying to recruit more leads uh, operating on the same 33% close ratio. And I just want to add here, I already said it in our own practice, we struggle with this, we get complacent, we got to come back and look at it by looking at it brings accountability to the entire office by knowing that it's out there and in front lets everyone know that it's important to us and we even thrive have forgot uh forgotten to to do this over the years and when we go back and we look at it there's always room for improvement so if you're one of these practices that say no 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 this is not an area i need to work on you are making one of the biggest mistakes in 2023 to not work on your, your telephone conversion. Lastly, Nabrin, I wanna uh, talk about Google ads. We all fall into Google ads a little bit because I, I feel like even me, you know, I know we, I trust SEO so much and I trust that we rank so highly and I've come to terms with the fact that we, referral isn't our largest lead source. I'd like it to be. Um, I think we all strive to have it that way, but Google is our biggest referral of new patients. And um, even those patients that are getting recommendations from their own mother are still going to Google to vet the recommendation and see how many stars we have. And that's, so does the mother get credit or does Google get credit? And this is why the asking that question doesn't matter so much anymore. How do you, <clears throat> how do you hear about us? But when I have a specific event coming, when I uh, want to market something specifically, when I want to do something quickly, because I realize SEO doesn't work quickly, um, I feel compelled to maybe 
use Google ads, or I'm going to put in there, I'm going to throw in there as well, maybe Facebook ads or Instagram ads, whatever is the social medium that I like using. I feel like maybe I should put money in. Is it, does it help my SEO? Is there any value to it on the short term? Let's talk about uh, spending money with ads. Yeah. So I'll give you some quick tips. Like we know why the average person spends 15 seconds on Google ads versus, you know, 90 seconds because of trust with social media. They only spend five seconds, social media ads. That's because there's no trust and no intention. Meaning they didn't type in Botox. They were just trying to see what Kim Kardashian is up to and they ran into your ad. So, so that's why they're even less interested. So, so knowing that the, the hurdle is harder and you know the burden for you is higher few tips you know don't do it unless your page is so amazing it'll convert in 15 seconds or less if it's google ads and five seconds or less so ask the question within five seconds is this page going to say there is dr you know jamie and then there is everybody else and i'm going to go to job dr jamie she is i trust her i like her she is an expert if you can't do that in five seconds for social media ads and 15 seconds, don't waste your money. So, I mean, I'm just giving you the like easy way to not get burned because like I, you know, like you said, Jeff, people can easily spend tens of thousands of dollars on ads. Second is measure everything, right? Put tracking numbers. So, you know, and co- you can compare like how many am I getting? Like many of our clients, 95% of our clients, before they come to us, even you, they rely heavily on ads. After they come to us, after a year or two, the only 5% of them rely on ads. Why? Because they're like, I'm getting five to 10 times more patients for the same amount of money that I'm spending with you guys versus what I used to get with Google ads. So why do I want to spend 10 times more for the same single patient? And finally, like we talked about your call conversions. Now you're spending so much money to get people through ads and then you're losing them. So don't again, waste your money till you're, till you're, you know, your, your call conversions are awesome. And last but not least, there are situations where it makes sense. Like for example, a lot of device manufacturers will give you free money for a limited time to for your marketing. Put it into ads, be strategic because it's not your money. So don't, don't leave the money on the table, take it, use it. And we do that for our clients. We have an ads team that's all about helping them make the most out of all of these kind of uh, situations. And then it's ROI game, right? So if you're gonna make $5,000 from a patient, even though you can get the same patient for $50 from SEO, you might still say, I'm okay spending $500 to get the same patient from ads because I still am making a profit from it. So that's okay. So you can make calculated decisions. Um, and also, like you said, Jeff, you know, your practice is startup and you need a lot more patients because SEO takes a bit of time, at least one year to ramp up, then yeah, great, great time to use ads as a way to like, you know, fill up the gap in your schedule and so forth. Yeah, I think if you budget for that the way Thrive did, we used ads knowing that SEO would take a while. The $5,000 a month that we had budgeted for Google ads, we slowly started converting that budget to SEO. And now I don't use Google ads primarily because I feel like the larger audience, 98% of the marketplace is seeing us without me using an ad. So The only thing an ad does is put me in the ad position and then in the organic position, which is nice for Coca-Cola or Target, but I don't have millions of dollars to spend annually in marketing. So I feel like the same consumer is going to see me. I don't need the redundancy to really dominate the world like Coca-Cola. I just want to dominate our marketplace with 400, 500 uh, uh, keywords, right? Uh, I'm not trying to dominate all drinking of any liquid anywhere in the world like maybe coca-cola company is 100 percent, jeff I, I think you're bringing up a good point like today if you're going to do brand marketing like you want people to know your brand like coca-cola like you need millions or tens of millions uh, otherwise don't waste your time i know sometimes when we design a site some doctors agonize o- over logo and my advice to them is unless you're going to put a lot of money behind getting everyone to remember your logo it's it's not going to work you know just because like we all know Nike because Nike has spent billions and billions and billions and billions, you know, making sure that we know Nike. I mean, so same thing with Apple, right? They spend tons of money making sure we know those brands. You know, it's a NBA trade season here and you bring up Nike and it makes me think if only we could get a 
uh, Paul Allen's daughter to sell the Portland Trailblazers to <laughs> Phil Knight, we would have a, a chance here. But um, so you is hit he trying to buy, is he trying to buy? Uh, he did he did he tried to buy? Uh, it. And we all want it. All the Portlanders want it. But um, I, yeah, we're, we're worried about our our big star now. So Narin, I want to uh, end with you know, what if I want to stop making this mistakes? Equa has been a great sponsor, gold sponsor of the business of aesthetics. Uh, I know you have a special offer that you've had for business of aesthetics, uh, community members and people listening to this podcast. Where can I start? I want to stop making these mistakes. Where do I start? Absolutely. Um, the best place to start is to find out how you are doing. So we are offering a complimentary marketing strategy meeting where we spend six hours, uh, you will meet with uh, Ryan Davies. He's our marketing specialist. He will spend six hours kind of studying you, your competition, and giving you a report card. Are you getting an A, B, or C in different, different, different um, aspects of uh, marketing? We talked about NAP, Lighthouse Call. And then he will also give you a plan. So if we were to work with you, what would we do? We have 14 teams working on behalf of our clients. What would these 14 teams do over the next 12 months? Where will, will you be? So our goal is to get our clients into the top 5% within a year. And then of course, really mastering those um, pages. So each page also start converting in, in, with relation to the you know aesthetic bias journey. So, so he'll give you a plan. He'll give you a report card. And then whether you want to work with us or not, take it and do something about it. If you do, I guess the biggest lesson you can leave from today is you will have SEO and um, conversions working for you, meaning like you will be really good at making your pages work for you, making your Google SEO work for you, and you will start getting into the top 5% and, and reaping the benefits of that because you will spend a fraction of what everybody else will spend getting that new patient. Uh, the link is businessofaesthetics.org forward slash MSM, businessofaesthetics.org forward slash MSM. We'll also include it in the show notes. It's a $900 value, so definitely take advantage of it. And I really think you'll you'll be very appreciative because uh, you will learn a ton. And I just want to clarify, Narin, the six hours is six hours that your team takes. How much time does it take me to give you the information necessary to, to do all the review? Yeah, we do it all. I mean, like the good news is it's the internet, right? So we can find out anything and everything about you and your competition. Of course, you attend the meeting and typically it's uh, 60 to 90 minutes where we would thoroughly go through everything we found along with the plan um, as to what you need to do to get into the top 5% and stay there. Great. So you spend the six hours doing research on my site in these categories that you've given your different teams. They give that information to Ryan and then some in an hour, hour and a half he presents that information back to us to let us know how we're doing. That's terrific. And if you're interested in doing this and, and uh, at no cost to you, so I don't, if you haven't done it, I, I'm not sure why you wouldn't, but um, go to business of aesthetics uh, with an S business of aesthetics.org forward slash M S M like Mary, Sam, Mary. Thank you so much, Narin. Again, it's been a really an educational afternoon learning about uh, the mistakes people are making and more importantly, how to not make those mistakes. Uh, I think there's just been a great discussion today of how internet marketing works in 2023 and how we need to position our uh, practices. And for those practices out there that want more help and support, certainly Equa is available to you, uh, businessofaesthetics.org. Uh, if you love this, podcast please go share it with friends please write reviews for us they make a big difference if you're a part of this community and you're wondering how you can uh, continue to perpetuate uh, this and having this forum available and this transparent share of information go give us uh, reviews uh, and lastly podcast guests uh, we're always looking for new podcast guests if there's really smart people that you want to hear from please go to Business of Aesthetics or send um, Jeff at businessofaesthetics.org. Just even the name of somebody that you'd love to hear from and we will reach out to them and get them on board. Uh, on behalf of the Business of Aesthetics community, uh, Narin Aruraja, myself, Jeff Richmond, thank you so much for joining us. Another terrific episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast. Thank you for joining us this week on the Business of Aesthetics podcast series. 
brought to you by our co-sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing, and Silver Sponsors, Lendia Law, Eilis Works, and Pronox. Would you like to join our growing group of aesthetic industry experts and get featured on the Business of Aesthetics podcast? Or do you know someone who would love to share their strategies for growth in the aesthetics business, providing quality patient care or their clinical expertise? Head on over to www.businessofaesthetics.org forward slash podcast stash show and apply to be featured as a guest on the show. Remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen. If you would like to engage with today's or any of our past speakers, join our Facebook group or LinkedIn group by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Thank you and have a great day.